Hello, I'm Richel Bilderbeek, and I would like to show an example of how to do open science. So I made a GitHub for that, you can find it, Richel Bilderbeek slash how to do open science example, because it's just one example how to do open science. And uh, what it is, it's a series of videos uh, for all steps, how to do, how I feel we should do open science. Of course, you're free to disagree. Um, today, this video will do cover step zero, why should you do so? Um, so, why should you do open science? Well, I feel that open science is already a pleonasm. Uh, proper science is open science, so if you don't do open science, you don't do um, proper science. Uh, but uh, perhaps I'm a bit strict, and of course there are some exceptions, but I think in a general rule, I think open science is the, the, is, is the uh, standard way to do science. I think it's a better way to, to acquire knowledge. And as a bonus, it gives you a more logical workflow. And I'll illustrate it with this text picture. So the classical way to work, I know some people, some scientists do it like this. Uh, they have their hypotheses, they do their methods. And when they find their results, they may change their methods or change their hypothesis. Uh, so they go, they change their conclusions all the way. And it's a very mixed way how to, to write down your article. And the drawback of this, it's not structured. So you, d you won't finish. Also your workflow has no structure at all. Whereas with open science, I've discovered that my workflow looks like this, that you do my hypothesis methods from that you have your results from that you have your conclusions. Actually, these are the four next videos that focus each on those chapters. Uh, perhaps it's a good idea to also define what I mean with open science. So with open science, I define it as a reproducible uh, research and it should be trustworthy. Uh, because that's, um, and what's the problem with that? Well, to make your reproducible, uh, to make your research reproducible, that's hard. And I mean reproducible as in be able to do it again, that someone else can do it again. So this is a quote of mine. If you assume your research will not be repeated, then you can safely assume your research will not be repeated. Uh, if you don't assume it should be repeated, it usually is too hard to do it by someone else. right? Uh, if you have it in the back of your mind that it should be repeated, I, like I will show you, uh, I will show you just one way to do it. I think it's easily repeatable. Also, if you do your research in a trustworthy way, it will be different. Um, for example, you take into account uh, the process of harking. Hark is, is an abbreviation of hypothesis after research results are known. So there are some people, that, like we know, especially in the decades ago, it was popular that you get your results first and then you write down your hypothesis afterwards that nicely fits your um, results. Uh, that's not uh, a proper science because the, like the theory that your results appear to confirm may not be very trustworthy. Like you just found those results by chance perhaps and then you give some strength to a theory afterwards. That's weird. The theory should, if it's never found uh, in a proper experiment, then it should not have that much attention. So this introduces this uh, session, this section, uh, this um, series of videos. Um, next video will show how to set up things. Second step, I will write down the hypotheses and I focus on that. Third step, I will focus on the methods. And then in my fourth step, I will focus on the conclusions. So I hope this nicely illustrates uh, the series of videos. Uh, feel free to disagree. Uh, that's just fine. And I wish you a very good day. Bye.